So welcome to another episode of WPG Property Talks. Uh, I just want to welcome a very special guest. Her name is the lovely Tracy Dransfield, and she's a client of Window Property Group. And I guess the purpose of this podcast is to just get the client's perspective and the client's journey of using a buyer's agent. And um, yeah, and we just want to really get your feedback, really, and um, how your experience was and um, really how your uh, property has performed since, since when, you've, when you first bought it. So, um, yeah, so uh, I'll let Daniel in- introduce himself too, of course. Um, yeah, so you got Dan the man here again um, on the WPG Bad Boys Buyers Agency. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's really exciting. Thanks, Trace, for jumping on. Um, I haven't sp- spoken to you in a few months. How you been since the acquisition? Um, really, really good, actually. I think, like he was saying um, about the whole journey and stuff, it was really, really good to have someone as a buyer's agent um, helping me with that process because since – since the whole thing, I guess I've felt super supported throughout the journey that now, even afterwards, I sort of still feel really relaxed because I, I still know that I've got owners or junior, sorry, um, and you yourself as well there. If I do have any problems or issues, like there's still that ongoing support. So I guess um, how I am afterwards now is pretty chilled. Like I know that there's support there. Yep. So um, I know if anything sort of... Um, does pop up that I'm not aware of or unsure because I feel like there's been such a relationship built between all of us that I can come back and sort of be like, hey, you know, I'm I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, that's awesome. (laughs) It's very very trustful relationship and we can communicate any time about anything and and go uh, all through your property stuff as well. um, In in terms of um, before you reached out to a buyer's agency, what was the process like? Um, so initially, look, when I first got into it, it's funny because it was never meant to be for property. I'd kind of just been saving. Um, (laughs) the plan was to start like a business and sort of go down that route. And, um, uh, you guys have obviously met Jack, which is one of my close friends and he's in property now as well. And, um, as a mortgage broker, but, (laughs) which is why I guess I got sold, but, (laughs) and he, um, he sort of heard about my circumstances and said, Hey, like, look, mate, I think right now like there's some government stuff happening like you know you're you're in a pretty good position to buy property why don't you take that route and I was like I was a bit reluctant but then he was pretty surprised too because like a couple days later I'm like okay how do we do this (laughs) (laughs) and then he was like he didn't take me seriously actually and then he's like yeah yeah, okay well yeah yeah yeah." um and then and anyway we ended up going down that path and like fast forward he put me on top oh, oh sorry he put me on to Onus and um, yeah, from there, that's how I really, cause I, I probably wouldn't have gone down the buyer's agent to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, just being new and thinking, you know, oh, I've got this, like, it's fine. Like I'll find something. Yeah. And Jack being like, no, no, no. Your first one is everything. Like you need to be smart. You need to have people that know what they're doing. And like, you know what, people that are focused on that end of what's happening, you know, which is so true. Cause there's so much involved and I think just having someone who's got the skill set for that particular part of things and having them take, you know, control, but you've got to have trust. It's someone that's you got to trust to do that job. And, you know, without a doubt, there was trust immediately with me and Onus. I felt like, you know, he's my age. We're on the same level. Um, like he, we connected, you know, and I knew, okay, I can trust this guy. And from there, that's really how I got onto a buyer's agent. And then I kind of just was like, okay, you do everything. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and, and how was that process? Did you, did it meet up to your expectations or? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I wouldn't even be on the podcast if it didn't really, <laughs> I wouldn't be here, you know, talking about it. But, Leaving us uh, bad reviews on yeah, Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. No, okay. That's, that's awesome, Trace. So, um, all right, let's, let's get a bit technical here, right? Um, I just want to get an idea of your mindset before Jack kind of introduced the idea of purchasing an investment property and after it and and what has kind of shifted be- between then and now? Oh, um, see, look, me and Jack have always had a friendship pretty solid on investments in general. Like we've always spoken about, you know, how, how wisely to spend our income and sort of set ourselves future-wise. 
But I guess I never really saw that I had an opportunity so soon to be in um, property. So that's probably what was the difference is like, I didn't realize how much I'd actually, and you know, probably having Jack in property at the time probably allowed that opportunity as well. Cause he saw what was going on behind the scenes and was able to say, hey, no mate, like you can do this. Whereas before it was always just an idea. It was like, oh, I'm gonna do that. But when that was gonna happen, I never knew when. Cause I always felt like it was just such a like, long term like this is somewhere far that i'm you know it's gonna take me a while so the fact that it happened so young so early and just when it did it was kind of like whoa so that's what changed i think is like just knowing how much of a reality it was and just knowing the right people how much that can benefit you so like people say like even now just the conversations i have with people at work and like not everybody knows i've got a property I don't, it's not something i talk about but you don't have a tattoo or anything that says no, no, i'm no, a property no. owner oh my God, I <laughs> somebody. No. Um, but you know if the right time comes out and I, I feel like you know maybe telling someone just so it can assist them in mentally shifting from that sort of mindset that they can't do it because you know people put a lot of um limits on themselves and say oh you know this and all that and so that's what really for me i think is just realizing it's so possible if you allow yourself to be well connected with people and if you if that's what you want and you're tuned to the right um network of people you can have it it takes time you're still gonna have to like put in the hard yard of like saving or doing all these little things but if you're already sort of there and you know the right people that's that helps so that's what for me has shifted is just saying the opportunities there if you just know the people to like sort of help get across you know what i mean yeah so, so you're saying the, the key is to having the right people oh. the right professionals in the right positions yeah. to hold your hand along the way 100 yeah. percent to kind of like allow you to sort of see how you're going to do it because they give you the roadmap yeah. you know like you guys pointed um or painted sorry how i was going to do it and you know there are questions you're not going to be able to answer yourself without the profession you know professional skill sets i suppose you know um, so that's what's shifted for me. I think is just knowing you need people that know what they're doing around you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a good point that that, that trust perception is good because you got to deal with people you trust, but also you want to have professionals too, because if you're dealing with people that don't know what they're doing and you're surrounded by them, they're going to be telling you the same things. It's too hard to buy a property. Well, it's too hard to create all the negative things. Mm. But if you hang around positive people that are doing that sort of stuff as well, then they can help you in the right direction. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. A hundred percent. Um, so Tracy, with your property, where did we buy? Remind me because I've bought so many. Oh, um, look at that. Oh. <laughs> no, nah, nah, look, I'm, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, Little but, um, <laughs> just, just give us a quick summary of, um, where we bought, how much we bought it for and the rental income. Sure. Sure. Um, so we bought in Hunter Valley. Or Hunter Region, I should say. Yep, um awesome. In Cessnock, which is about 10 minutes out from all the vineyards. And it's a great location. You know, it's it's still, where we've bought is still central to where everything is. But, you know, within a 10 minutes drive, you're away from like all the vineyards, which is perfect, right? Um, and we got the property for about 482, I think. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Did I get it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, on so. point. Those are numbers <laughs> too. Look and, out. Uh, um, which is, you know, fairly decent, I guess, for your first property, three bedroom, um, 500 and something square meters. Like it was a great investment. And yeah. we were able to not long, literally within a week or two, rent the place out for about, I think, four something, 410. 410, yeah. Which is, which is, I'm only paying like $50 out of my pocket every week for that property. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, that's okay. brilliant. Yeah, $50. But that's on my repayment. So yeah. that's like 200 a month. Wow. Yeah. So 200 a month is all I've got to kind of worry about. And I rent at the moment um, as per my setup for this property for the first six months anyway. Um, and, you know, that just allows me to live my life here in Sydney while I have people, you know, essentially helping me pay and assist for my mortgage. So there you go. There you go. I've, won. <laughs> I've so done, done pretty decent there. Yeah. So And that was all, you know, help with, you know, Onus and Windows Property Group just sort of... Um, managing the property for me as well and finding the people to kind of come in and live yeah okay that's that's awesome and um just in terms of your long-term goals tracy mm -hmm. you've got your first one now when you're gonna get the next and the next and the next um see well i was really eager i was like oh i'm gonna get the next one next year probably <laughs> not go. yeah probably it's not like a bug 
Yeah, yeah. literally. <laughs> well, you see, you, like I said, it part. went so smooth and easy the first time that I was like, it's so possible. I can do this in another year. Come on, you got this. Um, but right now, I think life, you've got to always project that life has different plans. And I think right now, because I've, I've hit such a big milestone, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ready to see what else I can do in my life that's aside from property. Because mm-hmm. um, I know I've got that. And I know I've got my foot in the door at least. And, you know, there's always room for growth with the property. And I can always come back in the property market once that's got some growth. Um, so for me right now, I'm, I, I want to obviously continue it. But I just don't want to get too far into it until I see what else I can do career wise with myself first. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm kind of just focusing on different things in my life. I'm still young, so I don't want to be all about property and then kind of just forget that, oh shit. Yeah, that, that's fair. You yeah. want to live a bit. I want to live a little bit, you know, like 100%. it takes a lot of sacrifice and dedication to get, you know, across those lines. And I think before I get committed to any plans at the moment, I just want to see what else in my life I have room for growth wise as well yep. um that i need to like focus on because if i go down the route of career you know like there's there's skill sets that i'm gonna have to learn and focus on for that and that takes time so i mean and you know that'll that'll only set me up to come back into the property market so it's just really looking at what in my life needs to grow first and then going down that route that's awesome that's really and, cool and um i guess now that you've got like your foundation set up in terms of um property and your finances then you can look and develop other aspects of your life too and and that's what i like about property and that's what it does for a lot of people like you're not worried about okay do i have enough savings or have have i got an asset behind me because you've got that now because you're invested in such a great market that's done so well for a lot of people so now you've got options really and yeah and that feels amazing like that's like the thing in life that we call freedom options you there know you where you have a choice um yeah. you know and i think it's so weird though because once i obviously purchased this property and it was such a big thing like it's such a big thing everybody says oh we gotta get a property we gotta get a property and it's this thing that we've sort of settled as like a top of the list thing like you know you reach this at 30 40 whatever and you've done it And to do it so young and like so early, I kind of almost feel like, well, what's my drive now? Like, there you go. No, because you seriously, like, obviously, there's always room for more growth and to get more properties, but because it's such a big goal. And, you know, if it's something you've wanted for so long and you finally achieve, you sort of find all that um, motivation sort of like suddenly, like, oh shit, like, yeah. You know what I mean? You've got to find it again and you've got to find the reason why you're doing it again. And so that's what I'm really kind of getting at is I've done it. So now I want to find what is motivating about how I take my next step. Like what, why am I doing the next thing? And, you know, you've got to find enough reason for all those things. So, yeah. And at least you've got that property now and you're becoming financially free. So oh, yeah. then you can work out what you want to do over the next few months years or and then you might even be like i miss property and then come back as a buyer's agent with us <laughs> yeah well i'm definitely not like it's not cancelled i always like to keep my options open and i never like to do one thing that's going to cancel out another thing i like to sort of have everything um working for each other like if this goal is going to benefit this goal to benefit this goal it's just which one i'm going to do first so it's always so yeah and you never you never you never remove any relationships especially in property with people that are good because i think you know, you're always going to come back, you know, life's going to set you up in a way where you're going to come back. So you need to, need to keep a good relationship with people that have helped you before. Um, and you know, if they're still in the game and they're still doing well, well, there you go. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And and do you think if you didn't have a buyer's agent, would you have purchased such a good property for such a good price at that so quickly? I'd like to think I could have, but look, (laughs) let's be real. No. Um, there was just so much involved into actually assessing a property, communicating with, um, you know, liaising with all the people that are involved and, you know, realistically, let's be real. Like, could I have done that? I don't think so. Could I have, you know, maybe possibly talked people down out of like their ridiculous prices that some of them had? No, (laughs) no. They would have been like, look, mate, you look desperate. You need this. And so I think having people that, you know, know their game and, like I'm saying, it's just, that's their game. That's their skill set. That's what they do. And if they're good at it and you trust them, let them do it. And it's, it's worth it. You know, it's a little fee to pay to have a long-term investment that's going to um, bring you back more wealth. So it's really, it's a no-brainer. 
And that's a good point. Like if you say it like that, it makes people think, well, there is value in them getting someone else to do it because you yourself probably didn't realize a lot of the things that happened during the process. You'd be like, what's a pest and building inspection <laughs> so- solicitor? I'm not yeah, getting yeah, divorced. Yeah. What do I need that for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and look, I'm young. So for me, these things can be daunting. Like you can easily be like, I'm in way over my head. And I mean, if you're older, more experienced, you've done this, you know, like, fair enough, I I give it to you. Maybe you can keep up with all these little things that you have to remember. But for me, like, look, I was just, I think it was just worth the investment of, and I say it's an investment because it really is like, you're setting yourself up for something. You want to do a good job at getting something proper, you know? And like, like we've said, we've gone through all the benefits of my property. Like, could I have done that on my own? No, I don't think so. And yeah. And and like i just want to like put out there like you probably could have a hundred percent like sell you here <laughs> no 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 but look <laughs> let's <laughs> let's let's keep it real um research reading books educating yourself there's no shadow of a doubt that you could have done that but then there's an element of time as well and did you have that time to dedicate to it because you had a window of opportunity shout out <laughs> yeah, no property um, oh, working wow. on that all day that's it um, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's it got to get it in I like it. but yeah a window of opportunity and like one your window of opportunity was you know you had these grants you had jack available to you to um your pre-approval only lasted for 90 days job situation could have changed Um, things could have happened, life could have happened, but then I guess, you know, engaging someone to assist you with that process really streamlines that whole thing for you. Cause I know people that have, you know, they've gotten pre-approval and they're so excited about buying, but then they just get stuck. So, um, yeah. I got very lucky too. Cause like I, like with my job, it's casual, right? So I only make what I work if I don't work I don't get paid and for sure I literally like Jack was like how are you gonna do this and I was like look I've got it in my head I'm gonna make this much every week and he goes you have to because literally this is what you need to to like get this property and like you're saying like things could have changed I could have literally sat out with that goal and not even and I was so lucky it's like the universe worked for me I swear like I worked the exact amount of shifts I needed to every week right up until the point of purchase and like to like really like and you know to work those hours i had to be working so like you're saying time i did not have the time because and that's where getting people involved is important because if you've got to make the means for whatever it is that you're trying to manage that involves time and if you've got to invest time in that you don't have time to invest in the research that's um involved in purchasing something and when i say i can't and it's not that i believe that I truly couldn't if I didn't want to. It's just when I say I can't, I know myself and I didn't want to. I didn't want to put that effort and time into doing all that, you know, all that part of what you're doing. So, and that's just purely because I knew I could invest in someone to do that for me. And it would be more thorough because there's things that I'm not going to know to look for that you're going to know to look for. And I'd rather that, like, you know, I'd rather focus on what I had to, which was just working. Um, which is all I could do at that time. And, and then let the people who sort of knew what they were doing, do their, do their part. And that was important for for my, my, my purchasing journey. That's it. (laughs) Yeah. And Daniel, you even made a great point on our last podcast. It's like, would you do your own shoulder reconstruction? And it's like, no, you wouldn't. You'd get a professional. Well, to 10 grand for my shoulder Rico was pretty expensive, but so it does work pretty good now. I just need to um, spray some WD-40 on it now. <laughs> no, I actually went to a proper doctor and did it properly. So it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I wouldn't try and save $10,000 and get my scissors and screwdriver out and try and fix my own shoulder. I'm going to go to pay a professional to do it so I can go back to my normal life and, and, and do the things I enjoy. And that's what it's about with um, using our services or a buyer's agent service in general. Like, you're paying a professional to do a professional service. You get what you get where you pay for. I think the thing with um, getting buyers agents and stuff is people people look at things as like added cost. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, that's why do we need to pay this? Or, but it's like you really got to understand the the profession. Like you got to understand what that person's actually doing. And like I'm sure there are people out there that say, oh, I know how to 
buy property i can do it for you and people probably have been swindled before and that's where the lack of trust and things come through and you know people listen to their auntie or their uncle or, you know like there's always <laughs> yeah, passed yeah, down yeah. stories but i think it's just yeah you gotta really you gotta vet the people you're working with you it's you gotta have like um good reputability like you got to know people that actually have used the service and can tell you hey or you got to really talk to the people that are gonna handle your um handle um the service sorry and really understand okay what are the questions being asked with me like what what kind of how are they getting interested in this process and you know like you sort of know when someone starts talking to you and the questions they ask you and the way they get interested in your journey and how to help you Mm -hmm. that you're like oh okay i feel like this person actually wants to help me and you know, like, and it's, it's not so much like, oh, you should come to us and pay this and we'll do this. It's more so like, oh, like if you do this, let's help you do this. And it's more of like a, it's, if it's more helpful than it is about sort of just getting business for them, then that's where you've got to sort of identify, okay, no, this person actually cares about how I do. Yeah. They and value that, you. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're valued and it's, it, that's important for a customer, I think, or a person coming to you guys or anybody providing any services you got to feel like that person wants to help you yeah like they're genuinely interested in your um you succeeding in what you're doing and you know not making a shitty you know long-term investment yeah and and i think that's also a good point you tailor the property to the person so we got you based on your budget a really good property in in the hunter valley with huge growth we didn't look to try and make extra cash in a mining town or something and that's going to depreciate over time really good value really good growth areas and that's the thing. If you spend the time with your client and you work out their actual, what they're after, their goals, then you position that property in that area for that client. Yeah. And that's important, I think. Just, yeah, being able to give to your client's needs um, without any sort of selfish needs of your own, you know? And I think there's a lot of that out there. I mean, we've seen it like on online, you see all these ads for these people and someone's always trying to sell something. So I think th- yeah. that that sort of like pushes people away um, from coming for help because and it's so saturated too i mean i don't know specifically with you guys and your um what you guys do but i just know in general like when i flip on my phone and i look at certain things um more and more people are trying to be something and do something in certain areas and whether or not they're actually skilled at what they're doing and saying who knows that yeah. did they do a course and then now like they're selling like you know this service i mean so it's hard it's really hard sometimes to work out who's actually doing the right thing and who isn't and, and how did you do your due diligence? Um, I was very fortunate that my friend Jack recommended um, Ernest, sorry, Junior. And that to me, like, because I trust my friend. Yeah. So we've already got trust. So And he he, he was like, you know, like, um, I think you like this guy. Like, I've got a good gut feeling. And I just was like, hey, okay. And But we <laughs> spoke, but, you know, it wasn't like, I was like, oh, okay, you know. Um, I did speak to Ernest beforehand and like, I got, I got a good sense of character and I, I felt like that was important. And I'm... I'm very, I feel like I could say this about myself. I think I'm very good at, you know, judging if someone's a good person or not. I mean, at least I'd like to think so. And yeah, I just felt like he was genuinely interested in helping. So that was important. And it was back to that trust piece. You trusted your friend Jack, who trusted Junior, so everyone trusts each other. Yeah, there was it's a all, big- It's and, all trust. Yeah, and they, and they still communicate, you know, like whether or not, you know, Onus is still helping me or not. Like he's still in the mix with me and my friends. So like, it's nice. Like, so I know like he's not, you know, he's not a service that we've just used and gone, okay, bye. He's yeah. still there and we- Use and, and abuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, can you help me? <laughs> hey, can you help me? All right, thank you. Bye now. How do I do this? <laughs> but yeah. So yeah. that's always important, knowing that that person hasn't sort of disappeared. Yeah. Um, And so they're still there to face the music if anything goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can put a name to a face and then you yeah. know there's someone there if you need anything, which is awesome. And that gives you that clarity and peace of mind. So- yeah. And you can go and do your own thing and let your property do what it does and, and we can look after it and manage yeah, it for exactly, you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Which is pretty much what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of management, um, you've got some repairs coming up. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Didn't think I'd be, you know, getting bills on this. Um. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. <laughs> But uh, yeah, okay, no, that's awesome. So, what's what's the next steps for you, Tracy? Um, what are you trying to do right now? Well, right now, I well, think. What are your dreams, goals, <laughs> aspirations? Oh, here we go. Um, look, I think oh, it's so hard to like put into words because I'm always floating around so many different things. But 
I think long term, it's always to grow and succeed in something. So what what that is, I don't particularly have a name because I find I sort of go with the flow. Whatever opportunity opens up, I sort of take if it's the right one at the right time. Um, and, you know, like like the property, that was the right opportunity at the right time. And I took it and look at me now. I'm great because of it and I'm happy for that. And so that's really what, for me, I guess the next steps is just continue that sort of um, trade of like finding the next opportunity and kind of following it getting better in that and then seeing where that leads. So right now it's, um, I'm focusing a little bit more on career, yep, um, which is why I haven't pursued too much with property yet. Um, because I think if I can set myself up there, that can set me up later in terms of investing um, more in property. So that's the plans for now is just focusing on career and kind of getting something solid for myself um, to then work off in terms of investing. And uh, I know you're massive on self-development. Yeah. So um, what are you reading? What podcasts are you listening okay. to? Um, um, e-books, all that kind of stuff. So I'm reading at the moment, no podcasts. Um, I nice. just, I can't really sit down and listen to podcasts at the moment. I go through like phases. Sometimes I'm like, oh, it can only be podcast. <laughs> ironic, but, um, <laughs> ironic. You're on a podcast, but you can't yeah, listen to them. Well, I can listen to this one. I'm on it. So <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, just at the moment, it, it goes through, I go through waves of what, how I can receive information, you know, like what you have sort of patience for mentally. Um, I, I'm very like, you know, if you can't tell, I'm very like, a, very high energy up there. So right now it's a book and it's called, oh, what is it called? The Universe Has Your Back. And um, I know, and it's a really good book. It's just, it's a part of self-development, but a more, sorry guys, more spiritual. Um, okay. But it's more about trusting your, um, I guess, just trusting yourself and knowing that whatever you sort of do in life, you're sort of guided and you're you're safe. You know what I mean? Like um, trust your inner wisdom and your inner self to know that you're making, that whatever decision you're making, it's sort of for um, a better you regardless, you know? Because mm. um, I think it's so easy to get in your head and be in your way with things and sort of stunt your own personal growth because you're worried about, how certain things may go and then that itself creates that block so this book has been really great because it's allowing me to have more um trust in myself more in the decisions that i'm making and knowing that regardless i'm on the right path and you know things will work out i um, just might not always seem that way you know it's yeah. easy to be your biggest critic so i think you know knowing to just sort of go hey you know what it's all right i'll be good um and so yeah that's sort of part of my self-development it's just trusting myself yeah <laughs> awesome yeah. And uh, how far into this book are you? I'm halfway into this book. Okay. Um, I only just started reading it, but it is a really good book. I do recommend it. Just It depends. It depends how you receive information. Some people might be like me. They're a bit more spiritual. Like That type of information to them is important. Um, but even so, I think it's just the message in anything you read. I think you don't have to necessarily be prescribed to that sort of philosophy of that person, but you could be like, hey, but you know what? I like the message you're telling me. And I think the message overall, like I just explained, was important for me at that time. Because um, that was the question I was asking, you know, I was like, oh, I just felt super um, unguided, super like, I guess after all that stuff with the property and stuff happened and I sort of hit this plateau and, you know, I started getting in my head and in my way. And it was just nice to know that it was okay. I was doing okay. And it was just about continuing the path, whatever it was, and just trusting that it would sort of lead to that long-term end goal. And that's where I'm at now. <laughs> Seems like yeah. you're on a pretty cool journey. Maybe yeah. you can write your own book after <laughs> Maybe, it. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Bloody oath. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Awesome. But yeah, it's, um, self-development's been really important to me since I was about 16. Yeah. So I've really, um, it was something that, you know, kind of just, you know, you go through school and there's so many obstacles with your mentality i think like mindset because yeah. your your obstacles are really in your mind mm. i mean look there are some physical ones if you know get down that path but yeah. it was all mostly you know just a mental battle and i think realizing that hey okay this thing has to be the strongest thing in my like toolbox yeah you know like that and, and just knowing that and not just being aware of it i should say sorry and then growing that um, for me has been important because I knew that, you know, okay, this is a high school. Imagine life, like, fuck. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And um, so apart from reading, what else do you do to kind of nurture your mind and, and, and grow it? Well, I've been wanting to do meditation. I do it before bed sometimes because um, it's like, 
helps me pass out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but otherwise, I do journaling. So I write in a book. Um, and that's something that I've sort of done since I was young. I go in and out of it because it's you got to really have intention for that. You've got to set time for it. When you get busy, flustered, it's really hard to remember these like things. But when you do do it, it's so important because I think with such a busy mind, busy life, it's so important to set time aside to just write in something and put set your intentions out. Just put your sort of um, kind of get a mind map of where you're going, what you're doing, what you're thinking, and then you can understand it a little bit more as well. Sometimes when you read it, you're like, oh, okay, that's what, that's okay, that's how I'm feeling, that's how I'm thinking. You know, cause it's so it's so easy to get chaotic in your mind. Um, so writing things down for me is very helpful. Um, I exercise, you know, I go to the gym, I try to eat healthy reasonably anyway. Um, but I'm not perfect. You know what I mean? I can say all these things. It could make me sound perfect, but I'm not, you know, like I have my days and these are the good practices that I incorporate when I'm very intentional and very aware of my decisions. Um, but then I can be on that roller coaster of like just completely losing the will and like being caught up in life and then having to remind myself, Hey, 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 hey you got to go back to that. And then th those are the grounding things for me when I do go back that kind of reset me and align me again. So yeah, they're, they're my practices, I would say. And does routine help you with that sort of stuff? Yeah, I need routine. Yep. I'm too like all over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just too like, if I don't have a routine and that's what the shitty thing about my job is it can be like shift work. So I can be like working night, day, then that can really, really cause issues for me if I'm not like intentional about what I've got to do in that week. Mm -hmm. You know, if I just kind of go to work, sleep, wake up, then I'm like, I lose track of everything. Yeah. Okay. I guess it's hard with routines as well, because if you're working different hours and things like that, you, so can't, you can't do the same thing at one o'clock every day. No, you can't. But I think like the, the mental barrier behind that, that I do, because I used to be like that, I could never do a routine because my life's chaotic. But then I realized as long as I get what I want to achieve in the day, or the week, it doesn't have to be time specific. Yeah. As long as you get that done, you still achieve the same results. And in your head, it's clearer because you've achieved it, but you're not paranoid that I need to go to the gym at yeah. 11 or I need to eat a celery stick at 1030. As long as I go to the gym in that day, doesn't matter if it's 10 at night, six in the morning, it's but still, still achieved. Done it. Yeah. Or if that's too hard, you set a week goal three, three times at the gym. doesn't matter if I go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, get it out of the way. And then you start to structure but that's that. being realistic. You know, that's like actually really looking at your schedule and going, hang on a minute, instead of like trying to force something, let's, let's see what we can do. For sure. I was definitely more of a forcer. Like I'd be like, no, you got to do all of these things <laughs> in one day. And then like, by the end of the day, I'm like miserable. I'm like, yeah. why? Because you can't do all these things. You need yeah. to be realistic. Absolutely. So yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. So any more so, questions, boys? Yeah. So have you got anything you want to ask us? Um, I do, but I can't think of anything right now because I'm still oh. dealing with my nerves. Yeah, no, no, no that's fine. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, every question I think of, I'm like, I think of something else on top of it. So I'm like, I'm just going to stop. Well, yeah. you've done very well and spoke very well. And um, thanks for joining Thank our you. podcast. Um, it was really awesome. And we got to understand more about Tracy and, and Thank her you. journey, which is really exciting. Thanks, guys. So thanks for jumping on and hopefully you'll be back on again in the future. And yeah, then we hopefully. can talk about either your next journey, your next property, whatever you decide to do. We'll get you back on and um, give everyone an update. Yeah, I can't wait, actually. I like those, um, you know, when you have like, it's like a time capsule kind of thing when you, <laughs> you sort of, you start at one point and then you come back at some other point in your journey and it's like nice to look back. And I'm sure, you know, now that we've got this sort of recorded and done, it's, it's sort of a nice time capsule to be able to look back and be like, hey, remember when you were like, this is you when you started. So yeah. it'll be nice to come back. A hundred percent. And um, I don't think there's a lot of buyers agents interviewing their clients and getting their clients' yeah. perspective. So it's really refreshing to have your take and your experience and, and just what you're doing on a day to day also. Um, because like you get these experts in and all that kind of, kind of stuff. That's all beneficial. But then you like other people want to know how a client um has experienced this yeah. kind of service so yeah. i, I think wanna... that's really important to capture too and um to highlight as well yeah well, thank you um it's been a pleasure like being on here um thank as nervous too. as i am I, you know what's so funny i thought oh yeah i can do this and then i get on here and i see everything and i'm like <laughs> You didn't sound nervous at all. You were very good, punctual, nice tone, pace, pretty pumped. Yeah, I was, um, <laughs> I was well, you know, hard to try. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, no, well. thank you, guys. Um, it's Thanks been a pleasure. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. Thank you.
Miss Tracy Dransfield. Yes. yes the yes. one and only. <laughs> well, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> to inform you that all our material is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as professional or financial advice. You should seek independent financial guidance from a professional who can advise you on the best ways to proceed in your personal circumstances.